Child abuse, a public health epidemic in Genesee County, needs community collaboration for prevention, experts say. Abuse suspected in Port Huron five-year-old's death. Dad who left kids in car while gambling charged with child abuse. Macomb County man charged after infant son suffers shaken baby syndrome. Livingston County child abuse cases spike 73%. Michigan woman gets 20 to 40 years in death of disabled daughter. Alleged torture of two-year-old highlights rare charge in child abuse cases. Man charged with child abuse after toddler suffers serious burns. Mom charged with child abuse, manslaughter, and baby's drowning death. They need a helping hand to guide along the way. The Anna Center, inspiring life. When we decided to become foster parents, we wanted to do it as quickly as possible, and we called the Anna Center for Children, and they were the first agency that could get us into classes the fastest. My story of being a foster parent is that we had five biological children and my daughter has special needs and she needed somebody that she could be a role model for. So foster care was our way of bringing other children in our family um, to mentor. And although we made a pact that we wouldn't adapt, we became adoptive parents because after you get children in your home and you love them unconditionally, they become your children. I think the, um, my favorite story about my kids is the lessons that it taught my biological children. Our first Christmas, my um, adopted son asked for a blanket of his own while my other kids were asking for um, Nintendo DS's. And it really taught my children that uh, there's a lot of need in the world and that everybody has the same things as they do and how lucky they are. They put a seven-week-old baby girl in my arms. That pretty much was the end of that right there. I just knew she was mine, and I wanted her, and uh, so that's what we did. When she became available, we adopted her. But that first actual looked in my face and called me mama, that was, that was the best. I mean, that's even better than adoption day. That's the best day ever. We, we encourage everyone we meet to get, if you've got room in your home and love in your heart, to give this a try. My name is Mark Chapman. And I'm a graduate of Inner Center for Children. I came into foster care at age seven and was adopted at age 12. And now I'm a manager for AT&T. Here's some more stories from our foster and adoptive families. I have a daughter that's nonverbal. So I said, well, I don't know any sign language, but I know the love that I have is strong enough in any conversation as long as my child can feel me. They know that mom is there. Mom has time for everybody. It doesn't matter how many kids it is, how many more are calm. I have time for all my children because love don't cost a thing. I decided to adopt my daughter, one of my children, when we got her into foster care, she came to my home. Um, I wouldn't change the way I did that for nothing in the world. I'm glad I came in this Center for Children. That was the biggest door I came through because I knew that there was gonna be some changes in my life and I was interested in changing the lives of children that's been abandoned and abused. My husband and I decided to become foster parents because my husband was in foster care himself starting at the age of 14 until he aged out of the system. And my parents were foster parents um, from before I was born until after I left their home and I have eight adopted brothers and sisters. We found Anna Center for Children in Flint and immediately started the pride training. Then we went through all of the paperwork and did our home studies, did our background checks, and we were licensed on that following October. We started fostering to adopt. So we did not feel um, that we were going to be able to get pregnant. And so we started the fostering to adopt process. And we quickly got pregnant as soon as we started the process. When we had new children come into our home, we tried to help them settle in by getting them the items that they needed, like a blanket of their own, a pillow of their own, toys they could call their own, not just household toys, and the clothes that they needed. I have learned through the fostering process how to love and let go. Even though you know you're going to have to let go of a lot of these children, it's okay to love them, and it's okay to show them what it's like to have a family. 
Not one of my children treat each other different from the next, and they don't treat their biological siblings any different than their adopted siblings. So for us, our family is just kind of like a puzzle coming together. Anna Center for Children has been a huge support. We've always felt like this is our family, our extended family when we come back. If you're thinking of becoming a foster parent, you need to make sure that you are doing it for the right reasons and understand that reunification is the number one goal in this matter. It's hard to always keep your heart at bay, but if you can do that, then you are doing right by the children in the long run. The Anna Center, inspiring life. Those were some powerful stories. My time at Anna Center was very impactful, mostly because of the caring staff. And here's what they have to say. Yeah, I think the biggest uh, achievement for me was that first adoption I did. Uh, kind of just coming down to the case, really getting to know the family, kind of see the love they had for these kids, and then just being there for them as they, you know, the judge signed the finalization paperwork, you know, did the name change, and they're all sitting there bawling. And, you know, as a man, it's kind of hard not to sit there and not tear up, so I was just sitting there fighting tears the whole time, and I think eventually just kind of broke down and a few tears came out. But just seeing that love and that joy for the family was pretty exceptional, my first adoption. So the process for adoptions, first you contact them, they say you'd like to be an adoptive parent, and then you just kind of meet with a social worker who's going to kind of do a home assessment, show the state why we think you'd be a great match for a child. I think the greatest need for Ennis Center is just foster parents. Uh, I really think just trying to find caring families that have a home and the love to give a child. And that's what Ennis is about. We don't give up on kids and we don't give up on families. Anyone can be a foster parent. Anyone that has love and compassion in their heart for a child. Um, it's giving us a call, participating in orientation, going through the classes, um, and then having a home inspection. The greatest need at Ennis Center for Children is loving foster homes for the children that have been abused and neglected. The Ennis Center Inspiring life. Did you know that the Ennis Center for Children has been around for over 39 years? And here's a little history from the founder and president, Bob Ennis. It started a long time ago. Um, my parents divorced when I was uh, nine. My mother had some major emotional problems and my grandparents kind of came and got me out of Flint after I went with my mom. Uh, my dad went a different way at that time and took me into foster care, and, uh, but it wasn't legal foster care. I was with my grandparents. And I knew then that um, I wanted to do something when I got older with children. But realize every kid wants a mom, every kid wants a dad or a mom and dad figure. And we're looking to you who are watching this to consider doing that. What we want out of this is to find loving, caring, lasting homes. We're gonna be there for you and you're there for us. As we put it here, our foster parents are kind of our bricks and mortar uh, for what we call special needs children. And all that means is kids who have been in the system and still today, 85% of our kids that we do adoptions on come from the foster care system, our system, or we contract with about 12 counties across the state to do that. The Anna Center Inspiring life. There's many ways that you can support in the Center for Children, and Pastor Chuck has a few options for us. I truly believe every person wants to be a part of something that really matters. And according to Matthew chapter 25, as we take care of others, we're taking care of Jesus in this incredible way. I've watched my family, my brother and my sister, take care of nearly 30 foster children in their home. It's been an amazing example to me. You can help support Ennis uh, in a few simple ways. Of course, you can sign up to be a foster care parent and take one of these children or several of these children into your home and love them and care for them, as the scriptures talk about caring for Jesus you can actually sign up to become an adoptive parent and one day eventually adopt a child and make them your own. But then also there's much simpler ways of doing this and helping what, what someone else is already doing. You can shop at Kroger, you can shop on Amazon, you can shop at VG's, you can shop at Rite Aid, 
and a portion of what you use there, a portion of what you spend, will be brought to Ennis to help offset their costs and to be able to uh, support these children and care for these children. It enables them to do what they're doing. So those are just a few very simple ways that you can be involved in this process and really care for children and do something that matters for time and for eternity. For more information on how you can become a foster or an adoptive parent and ways to support Innocenter for Children, be sure to visit Innocenter.org. Well, you help us.